Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to chart your sales for the past year. We're going to show sales by month in Microsoft Access using modern charts. And we'll do a little bit of forecasting using Microsoft Excel. Today's question comes from Tim in Edison, New Jersey, one of my Platinum members. Tim asks, can you show us how to put a sales chart in our database to quickly see the past year's sales? If you could also show us how to forecast next month, that would be awesome too. Well, Tim, I can definitely show you how to put that sales chart in a form in Microsoft Access. Forecasting in Access is a little trickier. Excel is actually much better for forecasting future sales. And I will show you a little bit of that at the end of this video. But I'll show you another trick in the extended cut how to forecast next month's sales straight in access. So let's, let's, let's do the sales chart first, then we'll get to some forecasting after that. Okay, some prerequisites before we get started. If you don't know what the date serial function is, go watch this video on birthdays, because we're gonna have to do some manipulation with some dates in this video. You should also know what an aggregate query is. That's where we can take a bunch of data and group it together, like all of one month's sales, for example. And you should also know the format property and function because we're going to have to format our year and month a certain way. So if you don't know what any of these things are, go watch these three videos first. You'll find links down below in the links section. You might have to click on a little more link if you're on YouTube. But go watch these first and come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can go download a copy off my website if you want to. Now, in this database, we have the customer form and we've got orders. Okay, and each order has order details, which are the line items. And we calculate the order total by adding all these up. Now, normally, that's how you do it. But for today's class, just to keep things simple, we're going to ignore order detail. In fact, I'm going to delete it. Goodbye. Okay, and we're just going to use the order table. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get rid of the stuff that I don't need. We don't need a customer ID. We don't need this stuff down here. All right, we're just going to have an order date and an order total. That's all, just to keep things simple, okay? All right, so let's close this, and let's put some data in it. And I'm going to put in here, let's put in a bunch of sales over the past year, okay? And for those of you wondering, I'm using the ISO date format. That goes year, month, day. It's a generic format so that whether you're in the United States or in the United Kingdom, your date format is always the same. That's year, month, day. There's a video on it if you want to go learn more. So let's type in some orders. I'm going to start with, um, let's start with, uh, okay, we'll do this year. I'm going to go 110. That'll go this year. We'll put in $115. And then we'll go 115 and maybe 250 And then how about 130 and uh, $15. Okay, and then we'll do next month 215 which is $144. And I'm just going to type in like a year's worth of sales. I'm going to go back maybe... To like, let's see, it's, it's currently June of, of 2022. I'm going to go back to maybe May of last year. All right, so I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me type all these in. I'm going to pause, and then it's going to like be an instant for you. Ready, ready, go. And bam, I'm done. See, I'm like the flash. You didn't even see it. That's how quick I am. <laughs> all right, so I did 2022. I did January, February through, it's currently June, so there. And then I went to last year, so we have some, you know, a whole year's worth of sales going back. And the reason why I put a couple for January in here is so you can see how the aggregate works when we group these together as a single month. But for the rest of them, I don't care. Okay, so there's my sales. Do something similar. Then your numbers don't have to be exact. Do like a year's worth of sales going back. All right, now let's make a query to show us just the sales for the past year. But I want whole months because if I'm going to chart this all right, I don't want to just go back 365 days or back a calendar year because today it's, it's uh, when am I recording this? June 20th. So if I go back a calendar year, I'm going to get like a piece of last June. So I don't want that. I want to go back a year, but I want to go back to the first of the month of whatever month was 12 months ago. Make sense? Okay, so you get it? You don't want, you don't want it because it'll misrepresent your monthly sales if you don't get a whole month. So we need a whole month. All right, so query design. We don't need all this stuff here. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my order table. And I can close that. All right, we're going to bring in the order date and the order total. Now for the order date, I'm going to say, let's sort this 
ascending. And then for the criteria, I'm going to zoom in, Shift F2, so you can see it better. I'm going to put in greater than or equal to date serial. Remember, date serial is where you can specify the three parts of a date field. Year, month, day, in that order. So I want last year, okay, so it's going to be the year of today's date minus one. So if it's currently 2022, that's going to put 2021 in there, okay? Comma, now I want the same month that we're in from last year. So if it's currently June of 2022, I want to see June of 2021. So that's going to be the month of date. So that'll put in a six in there, for example. Okay. And then I want the first day of the month. So comma one. So there's your way to get the first day of whatever month it was 12 months ago or a year ago. Okay. All right. Hit okay. Now, if I run this, there is your dates. And you can see that, well, this is just a brand new one on the bottom. Ignore that. You can see that the last one we're seeing is 6-1 from last year. If you look in the order table, you'll see I intentionally put one in there from uh, from 5-2. So we're not seeing that one. Okay. And these are actually backwards. So I typed these in in a different order. So this is the most current one here, 6-4. Or the oldest one here is 6-4. And that's right there. So I should not see 5-2 from 2021 because of my criteria. Okay. We all set? Good. All right. Let's save this as order past year Q. I like to keep everything singular. That's just my own personal rule because it messes me up if I don't. Then I got to go say, okay, was it orders last year or order? I don't remember. So I just keep everything singular. All right. Now we want to create an aggregate query to group this stuff together by month. So all of, for example, this stuff, right, is grouped together. All right. So let's close this one. You can't do them both in the same query. When you put your criteria on like that, if you try to aggregate it, sometimes things get messed up. So it's better just to make two queries. All right, we're going to make another query, create query design. Bring in your order past year queue. Come on, there you are. All right. Now, I want the order date over here, but I don't want the whole date. I don't need the days. I just want the month part. So I'm going to create a calculated field. Got a video on calculated fields too. If you watch the aggregate query one, you'd know about the calculated field. So if you watch those other videos, then you should know this one. But here's another video if you want to go watch this, if you don't know what these are. And a lot of people say to me, Rick, why do you make us jump around so much? Right? Be well, because that's how the tech help videos are. It's, it's random topics. In my full courses, I go beginner level one, two, three, and so on. Everything's taught in order, so there's no jumping around. But for these videos, yeah, you might have to do a little homework before you can finish this video all right so i want just the year and month here together so i want like 2022-01 okay so we're going to call this order month colon let me zoom in for you order month is going to be format use the format function so i want you to watch it right format the order date as yyyy dash mm that's all you need now this will be a string value it's not going to be a date value anymore but that's okay it's only for the chart. It's just going to be displayed on a chart. And the other query already handled the date part of it, which is the criteria to limit the records. Now we just want to format it in the, the display math, the, the, the way we want to display it on the chart. Okay. And we want that. Then we also need the order total. Okay. And if I run it right now, it's going to look like this. So now I can group these together with an aggregate. Okay. So turn the aggregates on. Group by that, and we're going to sum up this. All right, so when we run it now, look, all those are grouped together. In that party. All right, so let's save this one as order past year ag q. I usually, I usually go ag q, the typing on aggregate query. That way I know it's an aggregate. Just be consistent. Okay, now that we got this bad boy, we can make our chart. So you can make a brand new chart form if you want to i'm just going to throw it on the main menu that's fine design view we'll just put it out over here go like that okay now form design there's the old chart guy which is right there that's the old chart that's been around since like access 97 that's like super old it's like over 20 some years old and it looks it it's it, it was never updated that often and whatever but then there's the new modern charts which are over here and these are nicer they're great 
But they're still, they still need some work. One of my pet peeves at Microsoft is they give all kinds of love to Excel and, and Access as the redheaded stepchild. So these need work. In fact, I really haven't covered these exhaustively in my full course yet, my regular course, just because I'm waiting for Microsoft to finish them. Please, Microsoft, finish the modern charts. There are so many features you need to add. They're okay. You can make a simple basic chart. And honestly, for Access, that's usually all you want is something simple. If you want to do some crazy, you know, uh, professional level charting, yeah, usually I take my data over to Excel and chart it there. Access is for data storage, right? A Excel is more for analyzing. But we can make some good charts in here. I think I did a pie chart in a previous class. Um, we'll go to column. We'll just do a simple clustered column. Draw a box right here where you want the chart to go. I mean, these aren't bad. They just need some love. All right, I'm going to slide this over so we can see the chart as we're building it. All right, here's our chart settings. Where are you getting your data from, your data source? Go to queries, drop that down, and pick the order past your aggregate query. And there it is. And you're pretty much done. I mean, if you want to be done now, that's that's fine. Okay? Your axis, your legend, we don't need a legend. Okay? You want to change the format, come on over here. You can change, you know, you can put a trend line on if you want to. All right? You can, you know, give it a name. Um, I'm going to turn that off. I don't really like that. Well, no, let's, let's leave it on for now. Let's leave it on. Okay, you could change the color. You want to change color over here? Make your sales, I don't know, dark blue. Okay. Um, now, this is the chart settings for the chart control, uh, in the modern stuff. But if you close that and then double click on this chart, it'll bring up the property sheet for the chart. And there's even more stuff in here. Very confusing, Microsoft. Very confusing. You should be have one interface to update this whole thing. So it's chart 16 right now. I don't like that. Let's call it my chart. Now there's a million options in here and I I encourage you to come in here and play with some of these options. You can change your colors. If there's a legend, like I'm gonna turn the legend off. We don't need the legend. Um, you know, what do you want the uh, the title to be, right? It has title, yes. Chart title, right? Sales for previous year, whatever you want it to be, yar. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of options here. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. There's a lot of them. And yes, eventually when Microsoft finishes modern charts, I will have a whole class on them. <laughs> I cover them briefly in my regular course. Okay, so there you go. Now, as you can see, right, this little guy over here isn't finished because we got a little teeny tiny bit of data there. In the extended cut, I'm going to show you members how to forecast what that's going to be and put a bar in there. All right, we'll do that in a few minutes. But for the rest of you, let's save this and close it and then open, open it back up again. And oh, it, I got to save it out here. Move there and hit save, control S, close it, open it back up again. All right, so there we go. It looks pretty good. For a quick at a glance, what are my sales look like? That looks nice. And that's what the access modern charts are good for. Just real quick summary data. But if you want a good forecast, you want to go out like three periods, take this data, bring it over to Excel. Okay, now the data is already in this query right here. So just double click on that, open it up, right? Click up here, copy everything, control C, it's in the clipboard. Let's go over to Excel. Chances are, if you got access on your system, you got Excel too. Here I am in Excel, click right here, paste, there's my data. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now drop a chart in. I'm gonna select all this. I'm gonna go to insert. And then there's recommended charts. I'm just going to stick with the sta same kind of 2D chart, like this guy. Or these are a little bit nicer looking. Let's go with one of these. All right. Click a 3D clustered chart like that. And boom, you're done. See? Now, if you don't want this last month skewing your results, just delete it over here. Just highlight that road. Right-click, delete. Boom. Gone. And that fixes it. Okay? You don't want to put a, an incomplete row of data in there because it'll throw your forecasting off. This month here, what did I do there? <laughs> I was trying to get it like smooth. Let's cheat. Let's say 2022.01 is not that high. Let's go, um, let's go 95. That looks a lot better. That's, that's what I was trying to do. I don't know what happened. But now you can right click in here and go to, well, right click in here. Oh, I, come like, oh, I can't add a trend line. Uh, could be the chart type. Let's change it. Right click, change chart type. Let's change it to a standard 2D clustered column 
And now, yep, now we can add a trend line. I, it's Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> okay, so there's our trend line. Usually linear is what you do for sales projections. All right, if you scroll down, you can forecast it forward a number of periods, like three periods, and that'll give you roughly where your sales should be. I wouldn't go too far than, too much further than three periods, though. The people on Shark Tank. Well, we did it. Half a million dollars last year. We're projecting $30 million next year. <laughs> no. <laughs> where do you get that from? All right. If you do want to forecast over here numerically, you, there is a forecast function. In order for that to work, though, you got to replace these with actual dates. So let's get rid of these. And we, what do we start with? 2106. All right. So these have to be actual dates. So, so 21 slash 61, 21 slash 71. And then we can autofill that down. Like so. Okay. Looks roughly the same in here, right? Now we can use the forecast function to forecast what these numbers should be over here. So equals forecast. Now forecast by itself is old. That's just for compatibility with older versions of Excel. You want to use forecast linear. Okay. X is what is your data point that comma your known Y's is this stuff comma your known X's is this stuff and then enter and there's your forecast. Right, and then you can click and drag that down. Okay, see? Yeah, we probably should have used, uh, let's use, um, we can use absolute references for the front part. So this A2 right here, we'll have hit F4, that, that, that locks that one. And on the B2 as well, it'll lock that in place. So this tops, it always stays on that spot on the top. And now when I drag it down, it should be more accurate now. There you go. See, it doesn't change the top of the range. That's called an absolute reference, and I cover that in my course. All right, then we just got to format it as currency. Where's my format painter? There you are, right there. Okay, and there you go. There's your forecast. And if you want to extend the range of the chart, you can by doing this. See, there you go. And yeah, it's, it's, it's linear. It's pretty straightforward. That's what your, your linear sales chart should be right along that trend line. Okay. Can you do this in Excel or in Access? I, uh, yeah, you can. It requires some VB. And that's what I'm going to show in the extended cut for the members. All right, members. So we got, this is what our chart looks like right now with a little teeny tiny bit of June sales in there. I'm going to show you how to forecast that out and display it like that. We're only going to do one month. Can you do more? Sure. You can do a loop and it'll, it's a lot more extensive, but I'm going to show you the basics. And, uh, we, you know, you could take it from there and make more. Um, but that'll be in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases and have access to my code vault with all my cool VB code in it. And you want to become a member right now. Click that join button. Join us. All kinds of cool stuff in my forums. And uh, plus you get a free class every month too. Silver members and up get a free class once a month. So that's a good perk too. So what are you waiting for? Join right now. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can.
Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.